Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I am really delighted to be here today. So to kick off this uh, celebration of uh, curiosity and wonder, I brought to the stage three pieces from my personal cabinet of curiosities. We are going to play with the three devices of wonder and uh, hopefully unleash their magic. And uh, through these three objects, I'm also going to share with you my secret recipe to light ingenuity. So let's get started. Um, in order to introduce the first piece, I would like to evoke uh, the voice of Robert Anton Wilson, beloved patron saint of Boeing Boeing and one of my personal intellectual heroes. So please receive the signals from Bob. Language allows information to accumulate more and more rapidly as time passes. The doodle language, I can receive signals from Confucius, Heraclitus, Plato, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now the acceleration of information has reached the point where I think it's totally out of control and nobody can stop it. Thank you, Bob. Um, well, it's a known fact that nowadays the, um, the production of information is going wild. That's the reason why it's more and more important uh, to filter the right and valuable information, sorting signal from noise. So the very first device of one that I'm going to, show with, uh, to share with you does just that. Uh, it sorts signal from noise, uh, squeezing meaning uh, out of chaos. It is a language artifact encoded in that paper and ink format commonly called a book. It is one of the most uh, cherished fetish from my Wunderkammer. Uh, it's Eric Davis book, Technosis. Now you can easily understand who in the room have read the book because it's the one giggling and uh, smiling in agreement. For those of you who have never heard about this book, uh, let's say that Technosis is a kind of uh, a history of human ingenuity. It's a Rosetta Stone uh, unlocking the secret connections between the realms of magic and technology uh, throughout the ages exploring some of the most uh, fascinating implications of cyber culture. So along with uh, Confucius, Heraclitus, Plato, etc., etc., I am personally forever grateful for the mind-expanding signals from Eric Davis. And uh, I resonated so deeply with this book that I decided to carry it with me always. And for this reason, following the ancient hermetic teachings of the art of memory, I uploaded the whole book inside my memory palace. Put it differently, I committed to memory every single word of it. Well, just to keep the book's mojo alive. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, this book is made up of 335 pages. There are 39 lines for each page. Each of these lines is made up of something between five and 15 words. Uh, the gentleman over here, will you name any number between 1 and 35? 1, 1 and 335? Uh, 222. 222. Perfect. Uh, the lady over here, will you choose a line between 1 and 39? 39. 39. The very last one. Easier. Uh, the gentleman over here, will you please name any number between 1 and 12? That's the number of words that I'm displaying. Seven. Seven. Will you please join me on stage for a moment? And you will be the eye of this crowd over here. You take the book, just page through it and make sure it's exactly what it looks like. That's my copy of the book with my notes and stuff. Uh, just search for page uh, 222, as the gentleman asked. And in the meantime, while you search for page, uh, for line number 39, I'm going to write down something. Uh, now you can go to page to line 39 and you count the, the word number seven. Is that correct? Seven. Now will you please name out loud, uh, well, let me first of all read the full sentence. If my memory is correct, the sentence says it starts from the line above. Etymologically speaking, after all, computers are literally psychedelics that is, they manifest the mind. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Now, will you name out loud what is the seventh word from the beginning of the line? Manifest. That's exactly correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can take your seat. Thank you. 
Any question? <laughs> well, uh, now let me tell you this. The reason why I brought a book to your attention, uh, besides giving me a chance to perform my self-indulgent and vaudevillian memory stunt, uh, it's because I believe that books, uh, well, good books, are still the carriers of the highest quality of information. And books have their own special magic powers of altering the consciousness of the people they, they encounter. And so the first ingredient of my recipe to light ingenuity is books. Uh, so books are the building blocks of ingenuity. Chapter two. The second piece I'm going to share with you, uh, it's a piece of archeology span of human ingenuity. Uh, it's the very first human attempt to create a search engine, a kaleidoscope to peek into higher realms of knowledge. Uh, it is my Julian wheel. Now, Julian wheel, uh, this is brought to his, restored to its present beauty by uh, Ian and David Metcalf. Uh, it's been originally designed by a man uh, called uh, Ramon Yul, uh, who was a philosopher, a mystic, a polymath, and info jockey uh, who lived in 14th century Spain. Now, uh, Yul was a kind of DJ Spooky of his time, for those of you who know who DJ Spooky is. Uh, well, uh, the wheels are considered his most groundbreaking innovations. Uh, the wheels were made up of uh, circular paper discs that could rotate uh, in respect with one another, and the rims of the wheels were engraved with uh, letters, symbols, and uh, qualities of any specific field of inquiry. And when the circles were turned, basically the wheel would crank out all the possible combinations of such uh, elements, allowing new patterns and new relationships to emerge. And here we come to Yule's groundbreaking uh, intuition. You'll believe that any field of inquiry, however complex, is only made up of a very limited set of building blocks. And uh, if you shuffle and endlessly combining these building blocks, uh, men could get an understanding of any field of inquiry uh, and eventually have access to the totality of human knowledge. So for this very basic and pioneering intuition, uh, Yule is considered uh, the occult founding father of symbolic logic, uh, of calculus, of information science, and uh, the forerunner of all things combinatorial. Now, today I'm going to show you uh, an application from another field where uh, the, the wheel found good use, which is the field of uh, cryptography, which is the science of uh, encoding messages and protecting information. Now, this very wheel has been hacked. Inside of it runs a piece of software that allows to crack any password. Yes. Uh, well, in the spirit of the combinatorial um, you know, philosophy, this software runs all the possible combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols until the right combination is found and open sesame. But as a matter of fact, well, this is known in hackers lingo as a brute force search or brute force attack. Have you heard about this? As a matter of fact, this is a Julian wheel on steroids uh, because this is an hyperreal object harnessing the laws of metaphysics, and that's the reason why it allows to crack a password that someone is merely thinking of. So without further ado, let's, I'm going to give you a demonstration of a brute force experiment, and let's invite the volunteer for this brute force experiment. David, will you come, me, come here on stage, please? An applause for David. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was going to say, he's, he's the real deal. We had lunch together, and he did things literally under my nose that absolutely blew me away, and I still am thinking about it. I've been telling everybody who will listen. Now, watch did. this. That's the reason why I invited you, because if you tell the story to someone, they're not going to believe you. So I wanted to experience this first end, okay. okay? So I just wanted to make sure that we only, I only agreed, you only agreed to come here on stage. We didn't agree this. You're not a stooge or confederate. Is that absolutely. correct? Absolutely. You have no clue of what's going to happen. No, I have no idea. Okay. The only thing that I ask you is to think about the password in your mind and just lock it sealed in your mind yes. and do never tell it to anyone. Is that yes. correct? And that was all, all of the description. That's it. Now this is what's going to happen. Now this Julian wheel, let's activate the device. You can hold it in your hand while we activate the device. <laughs> and you can see that now the wheel is uh, guided through this app. I have this uh, Julian wheel app. 
which has been designed by my uh, friend, Wonder Injector, Mariano Tomatis. And uh, what is going to happen now, I ask you to think about your password while you look, you stare into the wheel. Just do so. And in the meantime, via Bluetooth, I'm going to receive some sort of signal. <laughs> yeah, right. Tell me when you're done. Done. OK, now hold, the, the, hold this, my iPhone like this, steady. In the meantime, I, hopefully I might have received some sort of signal. And this is happening live, just like this. Just stare at the wheel one more time. OK, if the wheel is functioning properly, oh, by the way, this is, uh, you can see, this is the functional scheme of the app. <laughs> of course, it's, total, it's crystal clear for everyone. If you want to, I can share further details later. But now, this is the deal. Uh, David, for the first time, will you mention the password you're merely thinking of? Say it aloud? Yes. Lux23. Lux, like L-U-X? Yes. Will you take a look at the... Oh my god! <laughs> That's exactly correct. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Take your seat. I appreciate your reaction. Now it's totally clear that it was just happening right now. Thank you for your beautiful reaction, David. And so here we come to the, to the second piece of my recipe to light ingenuity. Uh, as a children of uh, the remix culture, I believe that ingenuity is an emergent property of playing remix with your memes, uh, which segues directly into the third piece of my equation, uh, which has to do with the importance of building a rich meme pool. Uh, in other words, we need to, uh, to curate and organize the contents that we consume because that's the combinatorial raw material from which our creations will stem from. And so uh, a crucial uh, piece of this process, which is my third ingredient, is just like this. Write your ideas down. So we need to write your, our ideas, we need to capture our ideas on paper, uh, before they fly back to hyperspace unnoticed. Uh, as the Romans used to say, uh, scripta, uh, verba volant, scripta manent. Uh, now, even uh, though uh, writing has become the most commonplace of information technologies, it still, in many regards, is uh, one of the most magical. Uh, because writing allows to uh, capture our ideas from the volatile domain of the imagination and give them their first solid representation before they, think sh they can uh, take shape further into reality. As it may seem, it may seem uh, like old fashioned, but I personally write down my notes and ideas uh, with a pen into my third device of wonder, which is my Moleskine notebook. This is an object that I always carry with me, literally speaking. And uh, as you can see, this is just uh, white papers, a blank canvas, uh, a tabula rasa, such a ripe symbol for infinite possibilities. Uh, let me show you how it, how it works. It's a very simple and ancient technology. So in the beginning was the word, and the word is idea. Uh, in Italy, uh, it's pronounced the same, uh, well, it's written the same way, but it's pronounced idea. Nowadays, we can communicate across languages thanks to the uh, very eloquent power of icons. And I think that everyone can recognize this, this very simple icon as the typical image for an idea. So, here we go. Uh, words, icons, symbols. But the question is, how can we make our ideas turn into reality? So how can we make our ideas take shape in their final solid form? Well, first of all, we need to roll up our sleeves and uh, roll up our sleeves and uh, work the rough stone uh, 
In other words, we need to nurture our ideas with love and care until eventually the simulacra leaks from the page into reality. And that's how it's done. So just to sum up, these are the pieces of my magical recipe. Just feed yourself with high quality information, play remix with your memes, and write your ideas down. Put it another way, read, remix, and write. Uh, that's as simple as that. This is, these pieces are definitely necessary for, uh, to light ingenuity, but they are not sufficient. There is still, uh, still something missing, which is the light bulb moment, also known as the final secret of the Illuminati. Uh, now, this is uh, Nikola Tesla, uh, the undisputed wizard of electricity, uh, a man of superhuman ingenuity. Um, whose contribution has been fundamental to shaping the electronic age. Now, in his biography, he tells the story of uh, um, a sudden conception of one of his most groundbreaking ideas, just like he, when he was walking in a park. And he described the event with the following words. The idea came like a flash of lightning, and in an instant, the truth was revealed. So this is a perfect description of that most mysterious and elusive ingredient of a full-fledged uh, ingenuity. The aha moment, the epiphany, the divine moment of truth, when the portals open and the lightning strikes. And so to thank you for playing with me this symbol surfing game, I'm going to cast a final magic spell to invite the mysterious light. May the light of ingenuity descend upon us to accomplish our great work. May we become beacons of ingenuity, disseminating divine rays among humanity. Let's get illuminated.